Well, ladies and gentlemen, this series has been pretty much abandoned for a year or so. It's quite a long time, and you expect me, the expert on finding the most obscure music of all time, would do a daily series, or a frequent series, you know. Orion's Guide to Amazing Music. The whole point of this show is to find the most obscure stuff, talk about it here, and tell you where to go and find this stuff on Spotify, Bandcamp, whatever. Doesn't matter. Today's episode is going to be the Electronic Highway, which is me going and telling you about these obscure electronic artists. This can go for techno, EDM, electronic music in general, synthwave, and so much other genres. I'm Orion, and you already know that. If you want to subscribe, click the red button, turn on the notification bell, become part of the Super Chills family on YouTube. It would mean so much to me if you could share these videos to your family and friends. It would be great to have them a part of this community here. Let's get right into Ryan's got to amazing music. My love for electronic music goes all the way back to 2015 when I was super into Minecraft and super into a YouTuber called Sunday, which he launched a electronic music group, a compilation music group, 99 Lives. And 99 Lives was what it was. Electronic music, EDM. I believe it was more of a R&B electronic EDM music and I loved it. It was great stuff. Like, I still like it today. You know, I go back to it every now and then. I still have 98, I believe, the album 98 compilation. And that was the starting point of me finding obscure music and loving this electronic stuff. I really enjoy it. And that was like the first time I ever used Spotify. Creating a Spotify account just to listen to that or uh, I downloaded the zip file first, but I made a Spotify account on the day that came out. And Spotify, to me, is a curse and a burden, but it's also a good source of finding obscure music. Everything is. YouTube is a big factor of my finding my obscure music obsession, uh, Bandcamp, and all those sites. But that is the starting point. Where do, did I go from there? I went to Star Set. And this is the first ever band with electronic everything. Orchestra, synth, everything. It had guitar. It was like metal, the gent, mixed with pop music. And it was great. And it still is great. They're still making space music today. Star Set is one of my favorite bands ever. If I could get a shirt, I would. If I could get a CD, I would. But I don't have the money right now. And they're one of the bands that just got me into outer space in general and that kind of vibe is always been great in music. Telling a story and portraying something unique. No other band does that usually nowadays. And that's where I kind of had a halt. Until 2019-2020 rolled around and this is when I found the band Depeche Mode. And Depeche Mode, everybody knows Personal Jesus. There are other hits like People Are People. I think People Are People was the first one I ever listened to personally. Everything Counts is also a synth pop classic. Most of their songs are. And this is the sound that inspired me to even play the synthesizer in the first place. I don't have a synthesizer. It's really expensive. But this is one of the bands that got me into electronic music recently. Like diving deep into that synth pop electronic sound. And you all know that I've been really making a lot of electronic music recently with Insomniac Depression. The sounds of Insomniac Depression uh, releasing not too long ago, like a week ago or something like that. I have been obsessed with that kind of stuff. And this is one of the bands that I really heavily inspired by is God Lives Underwater. God Lives Underwater is a techno synth grunge band. That, that's the type of sound I'm trying to describe into my music. And God Lives Underwater does it perfectly. Guitar, synthesizer, drum machines, all that crap is into that sound. And that's the type of music that I want to make is freaking amazing. It's like, like I said, uh, synth, grunge, techno. 
And um, the singer, uh, For God Lives Underwater, sounds like Lane Staley, which is another plus uh, for that band. It died young, about the same age as Lane Staley as well, just a couple of years uh, you know, later. It's kind of dark and sad. It, I don't know how he died. I'm going to have to look that up. He died in his sleep from a coma. That is the darkest way. Not darker than Lane's, but, you know, it's stuff happens usually, and that is one of the scariest things you can do, is bleeding from a tooth infection. Like, that, that would traumatize me. That is one of the darkest bands, too. A lot of this stuff from the 90s is dark, and that's what gives it that sound. And Kidney Thieves, we have to get to that band right now. Kidney Thieves is like PJ Harvey, God Lives Underwater, and another band, Curve. I'm going to talk about them both here right now. Kidney Thieves is the music that you would expect to appear in a vampire movie. Vampire the Masquerade is what I've been playing recently. It's a fun game, really cool RPG that I've been playing on Twitch uh, and just playing in general. It's like really fun. I love that game and vampires in general after watching I was talking about this in the last video the movie collection video Under a World one of my favorite movies I've seen recently in the past few months is one of the best things to come out of this year for me personally out of finding stuff is Underworld and vampire movies and vampire games and stuff like that it's super fun and Kidney Thieves resonates that sound, Curve in particular as well, this psychedelic, grungy, showgaze sound that I love. And I'm going to recommend you two albums by them. Uh, there's a song called Zero, Zero Space by Kidney Thieves, and there's a band, uh, album called Doppelganger by Curve. Doppelganger is the Curve album, and Zero Space is a song by Kidney Thieves. I don't know the album. I'll put it on the screen if I don't know it. And then I have to talk about Curve's Tony Holiday's original band, State of Play, which is a synth pop group band, like Depeche Mode, that is really good. And I recommend you go check out both of their bands, all of these bands really, Everything I'm mentioning on this video will be in the description in a playlist. If it's not in a playlist, I'll make one. It'll be down there. And Kidney Thieves and State of Play and Curve, all that sound together in synth pop in general is a really underrated genre. In my opinion, all this stuff is. And State of Play is basically Depeche Mode, but with a female vocalist. Not a lot of artists are like that. It's, it's really hard to describe a synth wave, new wave pop group, whatever. I can't really describe it. It's, it's really hard. I have no idea what I'm talking about today. I'm sorry my throat is a little sore as well. I'm just all over the place. But the next group I want to talk about is Sleigh Bells. And Sleigh Bells is really not a electronic group or anything I'm talking about today. It is more of a noise pop group that influences a bunch of so sounds together and just, it's very catchy, basically. They remind me of a, a band called uh, False Advertising, which is another great band, by the way, but False Advertising is a lot more of a grungy punk sound, alternative stuff. Sleigh Bells is the opposite. Sleigh Bells has a bunch of noises together and makes the catchiest sound that I can think of recently. It can be obnoxious, but it can also be the most craziest thing you've ever heard. And that's why I uh, put them on the list because, in my opinion, anything that has an electronic or a noise kind of sound counts in this thing I'm doing today as the electronic highway on Orion's Guide to Amazing Music. The next band I want to talk about is Nine Inch Nails. I should have thrown that in the beginning with Depeche Mode. 
Nine Inch Nails, everybody knows Nine Inch Nails, and they have a lot of the similar sound of Depeche Mode, but it's more of a metal, industrial kind of sound. And I'm pretty sure Nine Inch Nails and what's that guy, that emo Nicolas Cage, uh, Marilyn Manson, uh, yeah, yeah, that made industrial. Uh, if I'm being honest, Nine Inch Nails was the first to do it. Marilyn Manson, we just forget about him. We don't want to talk about that guy. We're talking about Nine Inch Nails. And they have a lot of synth effects in some of their songs, like Sanctified and stuff like that. Sanctified is a good example of what Nine Inch Nails sounds to me with that sound of the synth guitar. Just the synth effects in general. Another s song by Nine Inch Nails, it's not really Nine Inch Nails though, it is a mix from David Bowie, I'm Afraid of Americans. Not a lot of people will know that song either. That's a very underrated one, in my opinion, of David Bowie's catalog. But that's a good example of what Nine Inch Nails is. Synth, pop, electronic sound. And they count on this list. You know them already, probably. But go check out some Nine Inch Nails songs. I'll put it in the description of the playlist, like I said earlier. If I did, I don't know how I'm editing this. But down in the description will be some of my favorites. Stabbing Westward, uh, this band also, similar to God Lives Underwater, a lot. It's that synth guitar, techno, it's barely techno, really. It's more of the grunge side of God Lives Underwater without the techno effects and crap like that. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's trippy, but also very grunge, like Nirvana and Alice in Chains kind of sound, but trippy, yeah. I don't have to talk about them too much, but I have a couple of my favorites in the playlist down below. Now, there is a few synth artists I want to talk about briefly, except from New York and St. Pepsi. St. Pepsi is a guy that, that I think makes the best synth wave out there. He is incredible. Like, his sound is, well, a lot of synth waves sound the same, obviously, but I think St. Pepsi's music videos in particular, Cherry Pepsi, which I really want a Cherry Pepsi now, is a really great song. I love drinking Cherry Pepsi, and I love the song, too. It just has these Michael Jackson clips, and it's, it's a really good music video. I recommend you watching it. Uh, right now because it is the editing is amazing his song is amazing his synthwave skills incredible and then Escape from New York not a lot of people will know this band Escape from New York is a band I discovered uh, I think this year or last year I don't remember but the bass line for Fire in My Heart or something I think it's Fire in My Heart I love the bass line in this song. The lyrics are good. It's very, it's a good love song, I think. And I think you should check it out whenever you can. Everything will be in the description down below. And the last thing I want to talk about in this electronic music video thing I'm talking about today is, of course, the best techno around that I know of, other than God Lives Underwater, which is strictly bunch of genres matched together. This is strictly techno. Charlotte DeWitt, the best techno player out there that I know of personally through my discovery of going into techno music recently this year. Charlotte DeWitt's sound is just good. It's the most amazing techno I've heard. The bass lines, the drum kicks, the, the techno drum machines, I mean. It's just overall, I love it. I love listening to this sound. I can listen to techno pretty much all day. Not really. I have to discover new things. Like I said at the beginning of this video, I'm the most master of finding obscure music. I don't listen to everything in all of the single day, but I could. I could. I have done it before. And the last thing I want to talk about is Jack White. Now Jack White isn't electronic music. What are you talking about, Ryan? He does make electronic music. It's not entirely electronic music. 
And there's a thing here. Jack White's new stuff is not electronic at all. I'm just talking about one single instrument, and we've talked about it all of this video so far. The synthesizer, my most wished for instrument ever. The synthesizer bass in particular. Jack White's synth sound on his new album, uh, Fear of the Dawn, and his last album, I don't remember the name, but Review Bra reviewed it. I'll put it on the screen. That album and this album are incredible. The synthesizer is really heavy in this uh, album, his past few albums, I should say. And it is the greatest sound I've ever heard from Jack White since the White Stripes. I was alive around that time, but I wasn't really into them too much. I dived right into his stuff recently, and I love this more than the White Stripes, if I'm being honest. And it's just because of my love for the synthesizer, and Jack White is always an amazing guitar player, but making all these bass lines and all these sounds come out of what he's doing at home probably, in his home studio with a band maybe as well, Jack White just creates the most raw sound, and I love it. And that's all I have to say about his stuff. It's always been at least phenomenal, in my opinion, of course. Tell me your opinion of everything I talked about today in the comments down below. Thank you for watching. If you want to join the Super Chill Nebula, that is also in the description with all the music I talked about today in a playlist called Electronic Tunes or the Electronic Highway, I might rename it. And I might have to make a YouTube playlist as well because some of this stuff isn't on Spotify. And that's a good thing because Spotify can be a scummy company and they take all the money, like everybody says. But anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want another one like it, please consider subscribing. Click that red button, turn on the notification bell, become part of the Super Chillist family on YouTube. If you have not checked out the videos here, these are the latest ones, and subscribe right here. Thank you for watching again, and stay super chill.